So far, we've, uh, we've seen how to define the derivative of a function. And we've seen some of the basic rules which make computing derivatives a lot easier. Because, of course, we, we don't want to always have to go back to this definition every time we want to compute a derivative. So we've seen how to deal with some of the elementary functions. We've seen how to deal with constant multiples, sums, and, uh, and differences. Soon we'll see how to deal with products and quotients and, and compositions. Um, but before we get to that, uh, we have one more topic. We're going to look at higher order derivatives. So the thing to realize here is that the derivative is a function, right? We, we've seen that this is indeed a function, right? Uh, as long as this limit exists at each point, then from our original function, we get this new function called the derivative. Um, since it's a function, it may itself have a derivative. So we can say, well, what about if we take the derivative of of f prime? If you do, you get what's called the second derivative. Looks like yellow is done. So the second derivative is denoted f double prime, f prime prime. And as you expect, well, one way we could write it is like this. It's the derivative of f prime. In Leibniz notation, the way you write the second order derivative is like this you think about squaring this d dx. So it's d squared dx squared of f of x. Okay? Or d squared y over dx squared if you, uh, if you want to use y. Okay? And of course, you, you define it exactly how you, how you would think. It's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x over h. Right? And you can keep going from there. So you can go to third derivative, fourth derivative. Um, you can take as many derivatives as you want as long as those derivatives continue to be defined. Um, the second derivative also has some geometric meaning. We know that the first derivative tells us something about slope, slope of tangent line, right? Um, sort of tells us the rate at which the y value is increasing with respect to the x value on, on the graph of some function. The second derivative tells us something about curvature. We're going to see that uh, in the next chapter once we get into, uh, into kind of the graphical behavior of functions. We'll see that the second derivative sort of tells us how a function deviates from being linear. How does the graph deviate from being a straight line? Does it curve up away from a line? Does it curve down away from a line? Uh, the second derivative is going to tell us about that. Um, in a physics context, of course, the second derivative, if the first derivative is velocity, the second derivative tells us about acceleration. Um, so we'll see that coming up as well. Um, so um, this is kind of the basic definition for the second derivative notation that you might see. And, and as I said, you can go on to third order and, and higher, right? So you can do, you can do f, f triple prime, which we would also write like this, uh, d3y dx cubed of f of x. And so that would be, of course, the, the derivative of the second derivative, and so on. Okay. Um, we'll do one example for this so you get an idea of how things work, and then we're going to be ready to move on and talk about product and quotient rules.